So welcome. Um, I'm going to show you Apache Zeppelin, a very new project. Who already heard here about Apache Zeppelin? Raise your hand. Nobody. Perfect. So this is an introduction talk. That's normal that you don't know about Apache Zeppelin, but after this talk, you will know. So let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Yuhai Doan. I'm working as a technical advocate for Cassandra, Apache Cassandra, the open source project. So uh, my job is to help people on Cassandra. So if you have any questions, you can drop me an email or on Twitter. I am working for data stacks. Um, basically, we are a commercial company behind Apache Cassandra. Uh, our product is an enterprise version. So you have the open source Apache Cassandra, you add extra features, and you have data stacks enterprise. So the question is, uh, I am an Apache Cassandra evangelist. Why am I here to talk about Apache Zeppelin? Well, the, the reason is very simple because I love this project. I discovered Apache Zeppelin six months ago and since then I use it every day for all my demo, all my talk, all my talks. So what is Apache Zeppelin? Right now, this project is uh, still incubating. Okay? And if you go to their website, they say that Zeppelin is a web-based notebook that allow you to play with your data in an interactive way to exchange your data with your friends, your coworkers, and you can interact with your data using SQL, Scala, and more. So let's see in detail. Let's start with a demo. So here is the main entry point for Apache Zeppelin. It is a web interface. So on the home page, you can see a lot of notes. So I will show you some basic data pipelining using Apache Zeppelin and Spark and Cassandra. So first I download some file from the internet. Okay. So it is ju just a small CSV file it contains all the unemployment statistics for the United States since 1941. So we can just have a look at this file. Oh, error, yeah. I need to download it first. Finish. So here you can see there is a header and then some data. So this file is very small, okay? It is here just for the demo. Now I want to store all those data into Cassandra. So I need to create schema, Spark demo, a table, US unemployment, and also an index on the column unemployed percentage to be able to search. Then I will need to read this CSV file with Spark. Who knows Apache Spark here? Raise your hand. Okay, for the other people, Apache Spark is a data processing framework. Okay. So the idea is, okay, I have my file here. I will read it. I will remove the first line because the first line of this CSV file is the header. I am not interested by the header. So this first line, I will remove it. I will take some columns. So the first column is the year, and the, uh, the tenth column is the unemployed percentage. I convert it to double, and I save to Cassandra. I save into the table I just created before. And also I register this data into Spark memory to be able to, to query on it. Okay, so. This will start a Spark job in the background. Okay, done. Now, because I have registered this, those data as US unemployment table in Spark, 
I can use Spark SQL to query. For example, give me all the data, all the years where the unemployed percentage is greater than 8%. We have the data, we can show also as a bar chart. The same kind of query I can do also with plain Cassandra query language. Select blah, blah, blah. And I can also filter on the uh, unemployed percentage. So here I put the threshold to two, so you can see many years, but if we reduce percentage nine, okay, pretty simple. So here we have a very simple pipeline of data processing. So how does it work, Zeppelin? Here is the architecture. On the left, you have the web page, okay, the web front end, built with AngularJS, Twitter Bootstrap, and NVD3 for the graph. This front-end is talking with a back-end server, the Zeppelin server. So Zeppelin is exposing two interfaces, one REST interface and one WebSocket for real-time update. Okay. But in fact, Zeppelin by itself is, isn't doing anything. It is just um, like a proxy orchestrator. The real job is done by interpreters. So we have many interpreters. We have the Spark one, Spark interpreters, uh, Apache Fling interpreters, Apache Cassandra interpreters, and each of those interpreters is running on a different JVM. And they are communicating with Zeppelin through a trip interface. So binary RPC protocol. So what can you have with Zeppelin? Zeppelin offer you a front-end and a display system for free. Okay. All this web-based interface, it's for free. You have a generic backend with REST API, so you can call, if you have, uh, if you don't want to use their web interface, you can create your own and call this backend server with REST API, it still work. You have a pluggable interpreter system. It means that you can choose, okay, I want to use Spark, Cassandra, Shell, PostgreSQL, whatever you wish. And they also offer you a, a task scheduler, like Hon system. Now let's focus into the layout of Zeppelin. So this is the layout. Here is the main menu. When you choose a node, you can see this is a node. A node has many paragraphs. This is one paragraph, this is another paragraph, another one, and so on. Inside each paragraph, you can see its ID. You can click on the run button. You can configure it, for example, you can move it up move it down. You can change its title. So there is no title yet, so. Okay. Um, since Zeppelin is using Twitter Bootstrap, you have a grid system. So for example, the width of my paragraph is 12. I switch it to six. And if I switch this one to six also, they will be reordered, okay, automatically. Inside each paragraph, you have two sections. The source code, where you can put your own source code, and um, the result, which is the rendering of the execution of your source code. Okay. Here it is a markdown source code, so you can see the markdown render can hide the source code, hide the rendering. Now, on the not level, you can execute all the paragraph 
one by one in the order they are declared. So if you click here, Zeppelin will execute this one, this one, this one, and so on. You can clear the output. Oh, nice feature. You can clone also your notebook. For example, you don't want to modify your source code, existing source code, but you want to, to edit, to change some, some stuff and uh, to test. So test, not dead. You can clone it. And Zeppelin will create a new test node. You can also export the content of the whole node into a JSON file. Okay. So you export to a JSON file. And if you want to import it again, go to the main menu, import. So you can import from the local file system or from a new IR. And last feature, which is very interesting, is the scheduler. So here I have an example. I have a shell script, a okay, shell interpreter. I just display the current time. So now this is 2 o'clock 26, 38 seconds. Now I want to be able to schedule this execution, the whole not execution for every five seconds. Every five seconds, Zeppelin will execute all the paragraphs. So let's see. You see, the time is updated. It means that if you create a data processing pipeline, you can schedule it to be executed by Zeppelin every hour, every day, every whatever you wish. And it is using a very classical con syntax. Okay. Last but not least, you already saw it. In each paragraph, you can choose the type of source code, the type of interpreter you want to use. For example, percentage MD is the markdown interpreter. Percentage SH is a shell to be able to do shell script, shell commands. Angular, the, the Angular interpreter let you input just raw HTML. And the Spark interpreter just let you do Spark or Scala code. Zeppelin uh, provide you out of the box a very comprehensive display system. And this is one of uh, Zeppelin's strengths compared to all the notebook system like uh, IPython or Jupyter. So let's see what are the display system. So by default, you can display raw text. Okay, this is a Spark interpreter. So I just print the content plain text. Now I want to be able to display my data as a table, like um, Excel formatting with rows and columns. So there is a special syntax, percentage table. The first the first row is the header, and then you you just input data, and each column is separated by a tab. Okay, so if I click here, I can have a beautiful table formatting. As I said, you can also just display raw HTML content. So here, I just create a raw HTML content using this special syntax percentage HTML. You can also display Angular content using Spark. So they they uh, provide you some Scala library. So inside Scala, you can just create plain HTML content. Okay, or if you don't want to want to use Scala because you are a web developer. Angular. Same thing. Get back to the table display. You can mix table display with HTML display. For example, I want to put some 
some column in strong and I put some colors to my data. Oh, red is not really blue. Blue. Okay, blue here. Last but not least, graph display. What you should know is if you are able to format your data as a table, Zeppelin will allow you to use the graph system. So for example, I just created some fake data. I have five people, okay, John Doe, Ellen Sue, with Scala. I build my own table with the standard syntax. So here I have a table. Now I can choose to display my data as bar chart, as pie chart, whatever you want. Okay. And what is interesting is you can also perform some group by. For example, I want to group user by their age. I click on settings here. So group by age. And I want to count the number of name, so the number of user. So here we have three, three person, three people having 20, 78 years old, two people 32 years old, and one people 45 years old. Okay. View mode. Now you may say, okay, I like this graph, um, this kind of uh, dynamic graph. I want to show it to my manager, to my boss. So I will give you, uh, I will give him this URL. Okay, so uh, just send him this URL and he can display on his own browser. The problem is that he will see your source code and so on. So there is a simple, thing to do is to switch the display. So this is the default developer display. You can switch to simple display or report. In the report display, you only see the result. Okay, You don't see the source code anymore. So your manager will interact with the data, but he cannot change your source code. Well, it's not totally true because if he put his mouse here, he click back on default, he can change your, your source code. So one solution is to export this thing as an iframe. This is the feature. Link this paragraph as an iframe. So you have a URL here, okay? And what you can do with your is to create a new web page, HTML, by, from scratch, and copy paste this URL into an iframe. And now, let me start um, HTTP server. Simple HTTP server in Python. Now, if localhost, this one. Now, if I point my browser to this page, I can see the iframe, but I cannot change the source code. Okay. So it means that you can create your own page with many, many graphs inside. You can compose your own display. It's like a, a portlet solution. And your manager can no longer change the source code. And what is interesting is that the binding is two ways binding. So for example, here, if I change the display back to tabular, this will update also the other display. Okay, Change back to this. And if my manager update the filtering, it will update the, the original paragraph also. Last but not least, dynamic form. Okay, you have seen that I have like an input text here. 
to be able to filter data. So to have a dynamic form, it is very simple. You have a special syntax like string interpolation, dollar brackets. But the first text is the, the label of your form. The second value is the default value. Okay, so here I have a markdown interpreter. This is a title. This is another title. Okay. Okay. We have seen the UI display system. Now let's see something more interesting, streaming. Because I said Zeppelin can be used for big data projects. And in big data, there's something big. So sometimes you need to stream data. Um, right now, what I show you is just request response. Oh, give me some data. OK, here they are. But in a real world project with big data, sometimes data are just streaming. You have a stream of data. And so Zeppelin does support some streaming. What is the idea? The idea is, OK, here. You send a request, a select, for example. Imagine that you're doing a select, and the select will return 1 million results. So of course, the interpreter will not send back 1 million results in, in one response. So it will do by page, page by page, for example, send back every time 100 results. Okay. So there is a streaming protocol. The backend interpreter will forward the data to the Zeppelin server, and it will forward back the result to the web interface using the WebSocket connection. So let's see it in action. Where is my streaming? Oh, I lost my streaming. Streaming. So just do it live. So this is a Scala code for each example. Fat sleep. So I simulate some waiting for so we can and then print and Okay, this is a Scala code. So what you are seeing here is streaming. So when the first time we enter this loop, we sleep one second and then we print out one. It is sent directly back to the, the, the web interface and then one second after, it will send back two, three, four, and so on. You can do the same thing with the shell script. So for, I think, I don't remember anymore the, the syntax for that. For I in, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, do, do code. I done. Oh no, sleep. Do, okay. So pretty simple. Uh, it is very limited right now because this is a very new feature, you can only uh, stream back text data. Because um, if we look back at our demo, here I don't have text data. I have tabular data. I have data which are formatted like in a table. So now the streaming does not work with table. It means that you, you cannot have a table which is appending new new rows. So the first implementation is very basic. I hope I can have some time to do a pull request to add this new feature for table data. But basically, it's uh, all the infrastructure is here. So it's very simple to add this new feature. But right now, streaming only works with text.
interface system. This is the biggest feature of Zeppelin. What is an interpreter? Well, in fact, every time I put some source code, Zeppelin just take the bunch of te text data, raw text data, and forward it to the interpreter. And this is the interpreter which provides all the semantics, all the execution of your source code. And then Zeppelin will forward back the result. Okay. So by default, Zeppelin is shipped with three core in four sorry core interpreters: Spark, the shell, Markdown, Angular. But the community has contributed a lot of new interpreters: Hi Phoenix, Apache Fling, Apache Slend, Apache Cassandra. I brought the interpreter for Cassandra. You have an, an interpreter for PostgreSQL, for Elasticsearch, for well, for whatever. Now, how to use those interpreters? So on each node, if you click on this button, the gear, the gear um, icon, you can see a list of available interpreters, OK? So you can choose one or deselect dese one, OK? For example, Markdown, MD. I unselect this one, save. Now, if I try to execute a markdown source code, error, because I just deactivated. Put it back. OK. You can also configure the interpreter. So click on interpreter menu. OK, here. The first interpreter is the Spark one, so you can configure any Spark properties here. The name, the master, the IP address. So here it is a local Spark because I'm running on my notebook, but in production, you should put your the, the real IP address of the Spark master. You can choose, you can tune the number of cores and so on. And for each interpreter, you may or may not have properties. For example, for the Markdown interpreter, nothing to, to configure just text formatting for Cassandra interpreter you have a bunch here yeah, lots of properties to configure the Java driver and so on now how to write an interpreter yourself because the list of third-party interpreters is not uh, infinite so maybe you you have some framework or backend, and you want to be able to use it with Zeppelin. So the idea is to write yourself your own interpreter. How to? Pretty simple. First, create a class which extends the interpreter base class. And then you need to register your interpreter in a st static block. The name of your interpreter it's fully qualified class name. Don't ask me why static block. It's a design choice of Zeppelin. Optionally, you can provide also default properties value with the property builder. Okay, add the name of your property, default value, some description. So what are those properties? Those properties as uh, those value, those default value. Okay, you can see in the interpreter config menu here. OK, you have created your interpreter, the, the base class. Now, how can you register it? Because doing this, Zeppelin won't do anything. OK, but you cannot use your interpreter yet. You need to register it to Zeppelin. So there are two ways to do that. The first, the first way is here. Zeppelin configuration, you open this class. It has an enum, and in this enum, you have a huge list of all register interpreter here. We have Spark, we have blah, 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 and just put your own interpreter here, the class name, okay? 
So this is, it means that every time you start Cassandra, your interpreter, all those interpreters will be available by default. Now, if you want to be nicer, and you can choose the second way to register interpreter, which is you can put the name of your interpreter in a configuration file. So there is a property in this configuration file, zeppelin.interpreters, just add your own here. So by doing this, you don't pollute the source code of Zeppelin. And of course, do not forget to update some important value in the pom.xml. You need to, to tell Zeppelin in the pom.xml file that every time you build the project, the output, the source code of your interpreter should be put here in the interpreter folder, base folder. And if you want to add a, an interpreter to Zeppelin as a default one, you need also to add your module into the main form.xml file. Okay, so let's show some real code example. I want to be able to create an ASCII doc interpreter. So ASCII doc is like markdown text formatting, very simple. What is the idea? The idea is here, I receive a text block from Zeppelin, from the, the web interface, from the user, Zeppelin just forward the text block for me. Zeppelin will not change anything. I need to parse the text block using the ASCII doctor library. It will produce an HTML output and I will send it back to Zeppelin, which will forward it to the front end. Okay, so let's see the source code of this thing. So this is my ASCII doctor interpreter, very simple. I extend the base class. I register my interpreter as with the static block. You have the open and close. So if you need to initiate some resource, you can do it here. Open, I just create a new instance of my ASCII doctor class. So of course I am using ASCII doctor J library. Okay. And the main method to implement is interpret. Here, I have an input as a string, a block of text, and the interpreter context. What I did is just to call ASCII doctor, please convert me this text into HTML, and return the result. And that's it, two lines of code, two lines. And all the method you don't need to, to care, just put default value in. So let's see how it works. So this is, so this syntax is ASCII docs syntax, okay? So let's check that I have activated ASCII doc in my notes, okay? ASCII doc is selected. ASCII doc, up, click on play. Here you are, very simple. Okay. So this is a very, very simple interpreter, almost no logic, because you are using an external library to do a formatting. But you can also do something much more complex than that. For example, the Cassandra interpreter. So the idea here is on the web page, in one paragraph, I put many commands. I insert into blah, 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 values, insert, 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 then followed by an update, followed by a select. So when I click on play, all those statements are sent as one text block to Cassandra, to Zeppelin, so to Cassandra, to the Cassandra interpreter. So the main job here is to split those statements into different statements, and for each of them, just query the Cassandra cluster to have, and then Cassandra will return the result as a tabular format, and I need to format this to give it back to Zeppelin, okay? 
So there is some logic here to split all the statements, separate them. But what is interesting is since I control the parsing, because I can do anything, I can create my own commands. Here you have native Cassandra statement. Okay, insert, select, delete, update. I created my own command, describe table, describe key space. Those commands does not exist in the native Cassandra. But I created myself because I am able to intercept the input text so I can parse it and do some processing. So I create some extra command, I create a help command, some options and so on. So let's see it in a demo. So here we have the Cassandra interpreter. If I just input help, okay. So here we have um, HTML5 menu, Angular Bootstrap menu with accordion menu, okay, you have all the help system. And if I describe, for example, key space spark demo. So here I have, okay, my key space spark demo has two table. This one is US unemployment we saw in the beginning for the demo. We have some secondary index and so on. So what is this display? How can I have this uh, kind of um, dynamic menu, dynamic form? Well, it is very simple because I am able to intercept all the commands coming from the front end. I can also generate my own, end, my own response, okay? So for example, the, the dynamic menu you see here, it generated by just a HTML template on the server. I have some HTML template. Every time someone is doing a describe table, I just pass the table name, query some metadata into Cassandra, and just use a template to, to do the rendering. Okay. So pretty simple. And if you are not afraid of Scala, so what I'm, um, yeah, yeah, you are laughing. Lots of uh, regular expression. But in fact, it is quite simple. I am using the scalar combinator parser. So the idea here is to define a grammar. I define my own grammar for parsing. So a query can be a single line command or a multi line command or a describe table or a help command or a create function or a generic statement. And what is a, a single line command? A single line command is either a single line command with hash or double slashes. Okay. So you define your own grammar to parse. And this is done by uh, the Scala combinator for parser for you. Because I'm using Scala, but you can do it with ant, LR, or whatever. And each interpreter uh, has its own documentation so on their website, so you can go there and most of the major interpreters have their own documentation to how to use them. So the future. So the project is quite young. Uh, they wanted to add new feature to for it to be enterprise ready. So for example, I don't want to put Zeppelin into production if I don't have at least security, right? Authentication. Now it is possible because they have done an integration with Apache Shiro, which is a security framework. Not, authori not authorization is uh, on the way. So you can authorize some people to be able to see some nodes mm -hmm. and not others. Usability. Um, they want to add some feature to be able to export the content of your table into CSV or PDF. Table pagination. Pluggable. Right now we have some only very few, very few um, 
graph options. I have one, two, three, four, five, five types of graph. Some people want some geograph, some people want some, I don't know, special graph. So it is always possible to do it by hand. For example, you can like you can do like a H yes, with this uh, interpreter, you can create your own HTML and uh, you just pull a JavaScript library to display your own graph. But what could be better is that Zeppelin provided. So the idea is to be able to provide some pluggable visualization. And in a re repository, you have different type of graph. You can choose the one you want to use. And of course, we need m more interpreters. So the more there are interpreters, the better it is. So we rely on the community to, to contribute. So there is a H-based interpreter uh, on the, uh, being, um, being done. And uh, well, if you look at the pull request on the GitHub project, there are so many new uh, things coming in. Any question? No. Clear? Okay. Thank you.